Hello and welcome to YCFT. We're doing Scooby-Doo. We're back doing Scooby-Doo. We haven't done it in a while. The live action. The live action Scooby-Doo turns 20 this year. <laughs> Fuck. 20 years old. Christ. I know. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> so, I, we wanna, we're not necessarily going to go over the plot that much. Uh, I think no. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about it. Yeah. Briefly. But I'm going to start with saying... This movie is just live action Zombie Island. <laughs> In many ways. 1998 Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. Both films start with the gang on a traditional Scooby Doo Where Are You mystery. Yes. Which ends with them. Uh, Jesus Christ. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did the mics pick that up? Uh, <laughs> no. Sorry. Which guys. ends with them parting ways after it due to essentially being. Bored of not of monsters not being real, and also just mm -hmm. tired. They're tired of the job. Yes. The job yes. picks up a few years later. They end up on a mysterious island. <laughs> yes. With that a villain true. that is posed as a good guy, which eventually turns into a bad guy that transforms into something else through the acquisition of human souls. Yes, and in both cases, this is exact. It's the same movie. In both, it's exactly the same movie. Different cases, but similar type of like zom zombies. Yeah. Would you say as well? You know, in this movie, when the I mean, I will talk about it more, but when the like the young people, their souls are taken, they do become like almost zombified, like robotic, in a in a way. Yeah. So, so it sort of deals with that. So yeah, element, they are the, they are the, to me very very similar movies. Yes. The main difference, obviously, being animation. Live action. Live action. But also, whereas at the end of Zombie... At the beginning of Zombie Island, they depart because they're sick of the monsters never being real. Yeah. They've done the same thing over and over and over again. Whereas in this movie... It's more acrimonious. This it's more... The breakup. Yeah. It's more the about the interpersonal relations between them, like... The sick of... Velma feels Vel like she never gets enough credit in the cases. Yeah, for the plans. Fred takes Fre all the Fred glory. Fred takes all the credit. Uh, Daphne's sick of being labelled as the damsel in the distress. The damsel's person having to protect herself. Yeah. Like, Scooby and Shaggy, the only ones seem pretty like, happy. <laughs> yeah, they're just So at the fine. end of this one, they part ways. Yes. They all keep saying they're quitting. There's this really sweet moment of like, Scooby's saying, do I quit? And Shaggy's Shaggy like, says, no, friends, no, friends don't. don't quit. Do I quit? No, Scoob. Friends don't quit. Friends don't quit. And it's, that, that's, it's like a... If one decision just splits off in the two universes, that's how we get these two films. It is, who, yeah. Who directed this? I know it was, the screenplay was done by James Gunn. Who people know for doing uh, like Sliver, Guardians of the Galaxy. A uh, director is a guy called Ra Raja Grosnell. Raja Grosnell. I, I, I think I've seen a couple of his things, but not I honestly couldn't tell you ton. anything he's done. I might have seen it, but I'm not yeah. sure. The film coming out is what, 31% on Rotten Tomatoes or something? It's something like, like that. It's, it's low. It's cr criminally low. Criminally low. Is this movie a masterpiece? No, God no. There's some re the VFX on the monsters are awful. The VFX on Scooby is really good. I think yeah. But the strength and what I think makes this film timeless is the casting. I feel like everyone is in unanimous agreement with that. It's like say what you like about this film, say what you say what yeah. you like about the plot, but no one is ever in dispute that the casting of the gang was spot on. Arguably, I'd say the biggest star in this would be Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yeah. But for the Vampire Slayer. And she yeah. plays Daphne. Yes. And I love her take on Daphne. They, great, they, great casting. They go like the the go-go boots, the purple, everything. Probably to a bit of detriment because it is a bit jarring, mm. her style in the modern world. But I really like her character. Whereas Zombie Island made her... They, they both made strides to make her a more independent character. Yeah. More interesting than she is in the original series. Like sure. Zombie Island made her... A, like a TV personality and she's a journalist and Fred is kind of sex, playing second fiddle essentially yeah. to Daphne in this Zombie one, Island this one she's went off and she's if you're going to hire Sarah Michelle, Bala, Sarah Michelle Geller, you want her to be a badass yes so Daphne has gone off and learned martial arts she will, they, she will never be the victim again they withhold it until the very end though yeah but it's worth it it's worth it yeah because Fred went off and just became like a celebrity in the he wrote a book. They play him as like he's a bit of an idiot. Fred in is, these ones. is like a self-absorbed 
narcissist. Pretty boy. Pretty boy in this, in this particular I like how they do away with the ascot quite quickly, though. They get rid of the ascot. But he's played by Freddie Prince Jr. Yes. Who, also those who previously worked together on I Know What He Did Last Summer and yes. are married in real life with kids. I love that Fred, Fred and Daphne, Fred and Daphne yeah. did get together. They did, yeah. Velma is played by Linda Cardellini. Yeah. And she is just, she's just perfect. She she's absolutely perfect. Fabulous Velma. Uh, Neil Fanning voices Scooby-Doo and I think he does a fantastic job. Again, yeah. as I said, the VFX on Scooby are really they good. They are, yeah. They hold, it does hold up. The villain... I'm going to come round to Shaggy because I, I, we need okay. to announce this. The villain, Emile Mondeverius. Mondeverius. Try saying that ten times as fast. Who's owner of Spooky Island. The owner of Spooky Island, the amusement park that is haunted and yeah. they needs the gang to come together. They're all invited individually to come and solve it. Yes. It's a trick to bring them back together. Is Rowan Atkinson. Is. Uh, what, you know, that's the all legend. we need. That's all we need to say about that. It's yeah. Rowan Atkinson. Yeah. He's incredible. He is. But Shaggy. Yes. Shaggy Rogers. Shaggy Novel Rogers. Rogers. <laughs> Do you want to reveal? It's Mr. Matthew Lillard. It's Matthew Lillard. The legend, one legendary of the Matthew all Lillard. All time greatest castings ever. And he. Where are you? Casey Kasem did pass on the torch. The torch to Matthew Lillard. And this after is this, this film. is the start of Matthew's proper involvement with Scooby Doo yeah, because of course it, yeah, it carried on. Very recently, he voiced him in all the other movies. Yeah. In the, the animated movies. This was the start of it. Yeah. He does the best job. He absolutely does. And do you know what I think really sells it? I want to uh, commemorate Rowan Atkinson for this as well. When they have scenes just with Scooby, who's obviously there's nothing there. They might have someone stand in for it. Yeah. They take it so seriously. It's like Michael Caine in uh, the Muppet, in Muppet Christmas Muppet Carol. Muppet Christmas Carol. Played Treating the Muppets like actors. You've got to play it straight. I genuinely believe, because there's a moment where Rowan Atkinson's character and Scooby share just a room together in a, a scene. I fully believe that they are talking to this talking dog. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's what sells these scenes. Because, so, again, Matthew Lillard would in so many scenes just on his own. Just on his own. Yeah, yeah. That's absolutely yeah. true. A nice little side fact. Frank Welker. Who is the apparently one of the most profitable actors of all time? Yes, the amount of movies did some that voice work on the creatures, and he is the original Fred Jones. He is. He also he has voiced Scooby. Yes, he as has well. Voiced Scooby. He, I think it's just if you've watched anything with any type of voice acting, you chances probably are. know Frank Welker chances without are. knowing it. Yeah, yeah which yeah. I think is inc- he still voices Fred to this day. He does. Yeah, which I love. Fantastic voice. Absolutely love. So yeah, the casting is. The casting is absolutely rock solid. It is absolutely rock solid. This um, is such an early 2000s. This is, it's so early in the 2000s that it still thinks it's the 90s. It doesn't quite have a, a 2000s identity yet. Yeah. And the bias of the VFX on the monsters is pretty atrocious. Um, but you kind of don't care. Yeah, the monsters. It's weird because when I was a kid, again, I've spoken about this a lot. But when you're a kid, you don't pay attention to a lot of things like that. But revisiting things... Oh yeah, the creature effects don't they yeah. do not hold up very well. Yeah. Like said, as a kid, on that point of view, you mentioned as a kid. This movie wasn't originally going to be for kids. It's, no. Very which, interesting yeah. origins. This very this interesting, film. like which makes James Gunn's input make more sense. Apparently this was meant to be more of a young adult film that they were gonna have it set more in a real world, and that's what a lot of the cast I know, because apparently a lot of the cast like weren't a massive fan of this film when it came out. And I think because they got like a lot of hate, obviously, critically got panned. But they must have enjoyed it enough to come back for a sequel. Yes. Linda Cardellini has said that they believed it was too adult for kids. That's because it was supposed to be a more adult film. It was meant to be more like, more violent, more sexy. Yes. And we've seen a couple of deleted scenes because basically the, the monsters take the souls of humans and wear them basically like as skin suits. As a skin suit, yeah. And there's a scene of like her dancing all sexy on a table. Being, yes. Uh, when she's when yeah. she's possessed. Yeah. Then that you can track it down online like un, like ungraded footage and apparently there was a plot where they've all switched bodies where her and Daphne were gonna have to make out in order to switch their souls back. Yeah. And they filmed it apparently. And they filmed yeah. yeah, they filmed they filmed a lot so the decision to make it more of a kids film came later. So yeah. I think they disagreed a lot of the stuff they'd shot they felt was too or that made it in the film was too adult. Which yeah. a fact I didn't know until watching it this time around. Sam Michelle Geller especially, they believed she was too busty. They showed too much cleavage. Yeah. So they had to VFX that out. Obviously, I've never I've never looked for that. But this time I was like, well, I need... Again, when you're a kid, you don't always you notice don't. these things. But you can, when you start looking for it, you can notice. And the straight-on shots 
She has basically no cleavage there. But on side shots, you can't. Yes. With the outfit set, they can't hide it. And it's like, she, oh, she's got tits. Now she doesn't. Now she does. <laughs> now she doesn't. Now she does. Now she doesn't. It's like, you can that was someone's job. That's, that that's like job. someone who in, in, on Pirates of the Caribbean had to draw on the Keira Knightley's cleavage. <laughs> that was someone's job. So like, yeah, interesting origins of this movie. You can understand. That is for Kira. <laughs> yeah, so you can understand like maybe why they thought maybe this was a bit too yeah. Well, it, sexual it, for kids. It is interesting origins as well because development for a live action movie went as far back as 1994. That's how early Warner Brothers. It, it is Warner Brothers. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it's Warner Brothers. The, um, that they were considering it because again uh, we spoke about this in previous Scooby fil- uh, videos, but the 90s is when we started seeing. Um, more of like a resurgence of yeah, of a lot of syndication and our generation especially falling in love with these shows. Exactly. So ninety four, there were talks of a live action movie. It didn't get green lit until two thousand, and yes, it was intended to be a bit. Do of you a think that's due to success film. of Zombie Island? Probably. Like the they probably didn't account for just how big that film was going to be or how successful yeah. it was going to be. It's like oh, we can actually make money off this. Um, also, in the early days, both Jim Carrey. And Mike Myers were attached to Shaggy. Those were two names that were circulating around uh, that time. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Matthew's too perfect. He's, Matthew is perfect. Shaggy's outfit is the only one I think really works. He just in modern, encapsulates as well. the whole role. Like, yeah, absolutely. Over, it got memed for a while, didn't it? It's like, oh, the yeah, actor just turned up a blackout, and the spirit of Shaggy takes over. <laughs> yeah, basically. I, do, I love the opening scene because I think in the original one the. I can't, I can't even remember the name of the ghost in the virtual one, which is actually on the poster. He was supposed to be the main villain at which the end. One, which one? You know, the, the opening scene, the ghost that they chased down. Oh, He was God. meant to be the main villain. Yes, he was. Because, okay, all right, this is major spoilers now. The villain in this is... The true villain in this is an awful reveal. Yes. And it, it doesn't make any sense. No, it's, it's never it's never been great. Even as a kid, I remember yeah. thinking... There's absolutely. one flashback scene where Velma's talking to some random guy. About, obviously, people know Mystery Inc. In this, in this world. It's set after the original series. Yeah. They talk about Scrappy Doo. They do. Who, in a lot of ways, it, a lot of Scrappy stuff is hated. I, he's some never of been it, people's favourite. He's never been people's favourite. I don't mind because I, I, really like, I really like my, my brains gave up. The one where they become a werewolf. Oh, Reluctant Werewolf. Reluctant Werewolf, yeah. I really like that one, which yeah, is a Scrappy great. one. So they have this flashback about Scrappy peeing on Daphne and trying to be the leader. So they abandon him by the side of the road. Well, I think uh, when we see and that And he flashback, is revealed to be the villain. When we see that flashback, that's kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. Because I think it's it's in, it's implied that he's been a little shit for a long, long, long time. Yeah. And they're so fed up with all his, yeah. like, his shit, but basically. But if you see a scene of, just, of this character, his famous character, once... You kind of feel like he's got to come back in some way. Yeah. But it's also, like, also... it's weird because telling the story then... Uh, through voiceover, I feel like this was Adam and say, oh, uh, puppy power, but uh, he wasn't even a puppy. He had a glandular problem. There was definitely test screens where they thought, like, wait, they just abandoned this puppy by the side of the road, so they yeah, then it, don't make him a puppy. It's always... Which it's is never, a bit... It's never sat well. It's never ever sat well with me. Because, yeah, without that line, Mystery Inc., one of the most beloved groups of all time, did just throw a little puppy out of their van and just abandon him to die in the middle of a desert. So by throw, adding in that line, oh, he wasn't even a puppy, he just had like a glandular disorder, that somehow vindicates them in doing yeah. it. But they still abandoned a dog yeah. <laughs> at the so side of a road. Scrappy you know? has been walking around in a mechanical version of Emile Mondeveris. Yeah, he somehow just accumulated all this like major intelligence to yeah. pull off this like ridiculous operation. So he absorbs all the souls that the monsters have managed to acquire. Yeah, gives to him turn into a giant monster, superhuman strength, and he wants revenge on the gang for abandoning him, basically. Yeah. Um. But it's just... It's, it's really just, weak. It is so it, weak. It honestly would have made more sense for the guy, the random guy at the beginning of the film to be the villain. Yeah, or just to have Rowan Atkinson. Be the villain. Yeah, the, what's wrong would with have, Rowan Atkinson just being the villain? Would have maybe been a bit obvious, but still would have worked better than having yeah. Scrappy. I still really want... I know we've got a list of like, Scooby-Doo t-shirts we want. Like, I want the Ghosts of Witch Haven and Lived. I really want a Spooky Island t-shirt. The Spooky Island t-shirt. Because I would go to this park. It's cool. Sugar Ray has a random appearance as well. Yeah. I do kind of like the implication as well that this is an island that's totally targeted for at, at young people. So it's like, we all know what they're doing on that island. It's a spring breaky type island. It definitely is. Yeah. It definitely is. I, I like the ride that is basically just a house from Scooby-Doo. Yeah. And it's really cool. And they find a room that looks like a brainwashing room. 
but it's actually just a room that teaches the monsters how to act human once they're in their skin. And once they're in little their details skin. like that I really like. Yeah. This one, it's not perfect by no, it's any not means, at but all. it's so enjoyable. What? It's the characters that sell it, especially... It's the cast. Like, Shaggy and Scooby have so many nice emotional moments. Mm. And it's like, this is, a, this is an actor and a CG character. That, there's been very few films where I've seen an emotional scene that I believe. Yeah. Yeah, it's like because like, it, as much as I do in this one, in this in this movie as well, we have Shaggy has like like in a lot of Scooby Doo, uh, spin offs and shows and films, Shaggy has a love interest, and oh, Mary Jane, that's Mary his Jane. favorite name. That's I wonder why. Name. I didn't get that as a kid. I never got it as a kid <laughs> I never either. Got that as a kid. I just always thought he was trying to impress her. But I was loving no. that same scene. Fred's reading his own biography. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but Fred she, on Fred, who's played by uh, Mary Jane, is played by Isla Fisher, who obviously went on to be a very successful actress. Um, but yeah, so Shaggy and Mary Jane kind of have a little thing, and it, it sort of comes between Shaggy and Scooby. Yeah, Shaggy um, can't see that. Mary Jane she's has been possessed. been possessed at this point, and Scooby. Actually, oh. it's one of the scariest scenes in the whole film. Well, the really bad. Well, one thing, like for two reasons, the scariest scene, or well, the scariest scene, is Scooby disguising himself as an old lady. Oh, as grandma. And, and somehow got away with that. Somehow <laughs> got on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> Post but yeah, when they're on the they're they're being chased, they're on quad bikes, and she gets hit by a branch, and her skin's like moving. And you see her demon eyes and mouth, and just like stretch. The VFX of this terrible, terrifying okay. part of that scene. Hang on, what hang were you on thinking a, about? Hang on a second. I was thinking of that scene because yes, the VFX is bad, but as a kid, that scene scared the death. Yeah, scared me to death. You know what when like you see yeah. her eye socket just blacked yeah, yeah. out like that on it that yeah. date used to scare Excuse me Mary Jane's thinking. a man in a mask Mary Jane's a man in a mask Mary Jane is a man in a mask Mary Jane is a man in a mask Mary Jane is a man in a mask the scene yeah, on the play I do really like like obviously Scooby's barking at a cat while dressed as an old woman and yeah. Fred's like now to get a, do- a dog to stop anything that's doing simply flick him in the nose observe he flicks him. <laughs> Scooby just punches Scooby him. Scooby just belts Fred. But do you notice that Scooby does that to Scrappy later? He does that when he's a giant yeah, monster. Yeah. I Little only flick. noticed that on this on this viewing. Little flick. Um. So I yeah, love, I I do love it. I'm such a soft spot for this movie. It's another one I watch like once a year. We do get some like good emotion. We get we get arcs with, with the gang, right? Because, at the, of course, at the beginning they're not friends. They they haven't seen fragmented. each other in a couple of years, and they all they reunite at the airport when they realize oh. God, we've all been asked to go to this island. But they, Arguably, they don't reunite there. They do intend to all. No, I mean like they solve phys- the mystery. Physically, they reunite. Yeah, but they they all intend on solving the mystery. Yeah. Separately. But one of the biggest, I, I guess, like one of the biggest issues in the gang is the relationship between Fred and Velma. Because yeah. Vel- Velma is the first one that quits. She's she yeah. starts it, and then all the others follow. But she's always had an issue with Fred for taking the fame, for taking the glory. Yeah. for Fred's taking like, credit the, for all the, po- the plans he's the poster boy of yeah and interestingly when they go and explore the first spooky house on the island it's Fred and Velma that end up pairing off together which yeah. in itself is kind of unusual that breaks off from what we yeah. always see usually in the it's do. like it's the Fred, Velma and Daphne yeah but Daphne decides to go off on her own yeah because she knows she can handle whatever she comes across whereas Fred and Daphne uh, sorry Fred and Velma go off on their own and that leads to a few like heart to hearts yeah when and they kind of do get to a lot of the bottom, they do. Yeah, Fred, yeah. And I like dumb Fred, but he is very. He has a heart. Fred. I think Freddie Prince Jr. does a great job. He really does. Fred is out of all of the characters. I feel like Fred is the one that changes the most, like across generations. Yeah. He the Fred that we get in the live action is not the Fred that we get in the '60s in the original Hanna Barbera. No, and we know, we said in the in the this is the a four animated Fred. films that we've done so far. That is our favorite incarnation of Fred. So far, this is a very different Fred, but I think he also works. My favourite Fred is Alien Invaders. It's like a mix of silly Fred, but also emotional Fred yeah. slash vulnerable Fred. I love Fred. the line when it's like, like, because she basically accuses him of always going off with Daphne because she's the pretty girl. Yeah. And she doesn't class herself as pretty and goes, no, nerdy chicks like you turn me on too. Nerdy chicks like you. You can tell he means that in a lot better way than it sounds. Yeah, it's just... Oh God, it's classic Fred. <laughs> like yeah. a backhanded compliment. <laughs> yeah. But they do get to the bottom of a lot of their issues. They do. And at the very end you of the movie... The, maybe the gang wouldn't have split up, but they just all talked, talked it out. Talked it out. But at the very end of the film, Fred does say, no, Velma needs to explain. The Velmster. The Velmster. Because yeah. that's how, they, when they all do get together, it's like, come on, Velmster, oh, give me a nickname, like I'm part of the 
Yeah. Part of the gang. So you always part of the you gang. You always were part of the gang. You, she was the most important part <laughs> well, then, of the gang. Then he follows up with when like, Daphne's like, oh, what's mine? I'll just get caught again. Well, that's never let it stop you before. Yeah. That's not the best. <laughs> that's no. <laughs> yeah. But I do love Daphne's, uh, she takes on a pro wrestler. Yeah. And it, it's really good. It's also cool as well. In fact, she does that in those boots as well. Daphne, da- yeah. Oh, yeah. Kudos to both Linda and Sarah because there's a lot of running around in wedges and platform heels. Yeah. So ku- kudos to both of them. That's not easy, easy to do. Um, but yeah, I, I do like in in the, in the movie too where the fir- out of the gang, both Fred and Velma are taken by the monsters. Yeah. And they uh, get get possessed. Their souls are taken. Well, it's also a pairing in then of Daphne, Scooby and Shaggy, which we don't usually see. We don't usually see, but I also love how it twists that traditionally it would have been Daphne that would have been the first to have been taken. Yeah. It's not. Daphne ends up helping. I think it's Fred is the first one to be taken. Fred is the first he? one to go and then it's Velma. Yeah. And like in quick succession. But Daphne gets a little bit of extra time. I there's no such thing as they break through the yeah. window. Like, monsters! <laughs> I love Because Velma tries to demask one. Yeah. Yeah. It's and I, I do... Kind of similar to how they, Fred tries to pull the head off the zombie in Zombie Island. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing trying like to pull the head Like that realisation of, oh my God, it's real. Yeah. Um, there's a great scene before they go into the creepy house, Scooby yeah. and Shaggy. It's like... When they're like, no, we don't go into creepy abandoned houses. And he has this <laughs> monologue. I'll try and insert the monologue. Yeah. Where he goes through a list of like, uh, you know, like pictures with hole with holes for eyes that follow you around, uh, suits of armor that move. And that's what happens in the very first episode of Scooby Doo. Yeah. Paintings with eyes that watch you and suits armor you think to sat you. But there's a guy inside who follows you every time you turn around. <laughs> How many times has that actually happened? Twelve. I love that. I, I, do. I didn't again didn't clock that. I knew that was obviously stuff that had happened. Yeah. I didn't realize that everything they listed happened in the very first episode. Yeah. No. It's like they say it. How many times has this happened? And it's like they name name how many times it's happened to them. Doesn't he say? I think he says twelve. Yeah. <laughs> it's like just like that. Twelve. Twelve. We're this not happened gonna do twelve it. times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. I I absolutely love it. Um. Yeah. I have soft spot for Scooby and Jaggy's far off. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah. It's it's so ridiculous. Th- that's when it's like, all right, we are literally in Toilet Human now. This is a kid's movie. And literally, yeah. It's like, not stop until your fur burns off. Till your fur burns off. <laughs> yeah, oh god. You're yeah. challenging me. Again, that's the scene. It's so stupid. Matthew Lillard plays it so straight. Exactly. It's like, fair play to all of them. They do such a great job. And you can tell they're having fun doing it, though. Yeah. Like, that, that's the thing. Also, they enjoyed it enough to come back for a second one. And obviously, yeah. Matthew Lillard went on to play... Shaggy multiple times, and he yeah. he actually thought because he wasn't asked to come back for Scoob. Yeah. The last movie they did, like the last like theatrical movie, and he was really hurt by that. I think he oh he was I, yeah, he was, I do he was devastated. That. He, was by, he said he was never he was it. never even approached. No, that that hurt him the most. I think that he wasn't even considered. Yeah. I think. I think even if they came to him and said, "Look, we just want to try something," I think he would have appreciated just like a conversation. Yeah. But he was just never approached at all about it. Yeah. Which is saying because he is like. Uh, He's a the beloved Shaggy. He is, he, yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, it's not even like people didn't think he did a good job. People love Matthew Lillard as, All, as Shaggy. Like, I read a lot of reviews for this, and so I know you, you did as well. And the one praise that constantly came up was Matthew Lillard. Was Matthew Lillard. It, yeah, understandably. He yeah. he really is. Like, I, he, I think Shaggy. Shaggy's always been my favorite character, but yeah. this especially. There's a reason why there's a, this, a spin off show that is. Like Scooby Shaggy and Scrappy. Yeah. It's you have the two characters that work the most there, the two that spend the most time together, and they're just the most interesting, the most they fun. They are. They are. Yeah. It's like I mean, also the mystery that they have to solve on the island. It is like a pretty in- interesting mystery. Yeah, it is. Too. Um, it's not, and again, I know. Again, we spoke about this was on the island, but it's the first one where they introduce enough characters and therefore enough suspects as to who could yeah. it be. And it's similar with uh, Spooky Island too. Yeah, There's I like do, enough creepy people about... I do love how like, the scene with uh, Rowan Atkinson and Scooby you get on this watch and, watch and he does notice. Now I'm like watching, looking for things. He does a lot of things like that a dog would do when like he moves. Like scratching his ear. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like, oh, see, it's scrappy. Yeah. Yes. But again, it's like, Rowan Atkinson plays that so straight. Yeah. And yeah. it's just... I love that, it. I that absolutely, absolutely love it. it leads to one of my favourite scenes where ultimately Scooby needs to be sacrificed. Like they need a pure soul. They need a pure soul for the whole ritual thing to work, for, for it to be complete. And Scooby is obviously a pure soul. 
Um, and so Shaggy infiltrates the whole the, the, the thing, and he dresses in like the uh, the uniform. Yeah. I love to see the Cosby Fox when they realize it. It's like a pure human soul. Where are you gonna get one of those films? Goes, didn't say it had to be human. Didn't say human. And it just <laughs> hits them like, oh boy. Yeah. But yeah, I love that moment where Shaggy, he's carrying Scooby on like the um, the, the stretcher thing almost, carrying him to be a sacrifice. The throne. The like, throne thing, yeah. yeah. And, the, um, I'm a sacrifice. Scooby, that's not a very good thing. Well, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. In the, you know, he's like, I'm, he proudly says like, I'm a sacrifice. And Shaggy's like, no, that's that's not a good that's thing, That's not a good Scooby. thing, Scooby. And it's, you know, he's, he's so childlike. He is such a pure soul. And Shaggy then has to say like, look, I'm sorry if I... I'm sorry if I've upset you and I'm sorry if I haven't yeah, been... Yeah, it's our heart to heart. I'm sorry it's if like, I haven't been a good friend to you. We're going to be the biggest cowards here. ever and we're just going to, just going to get up. We're just going to run. <laughs> we're just going to do what we do best. Yeah. We're just going to get the hell out of here. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, like a genuinely very emotional yeah. moment. There's a lot of great like setups to pay off. So, like, like a lot of films. Yeah. I love little things like Shaggy's really good at the claw machine and he ends up needing to be good at the claw machine to get the... The Damon Wright or something it is the, the thing that they use to get the souls yeah. like out of Scrappy's chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, I like it's just really good at these small emotional moments. Yeah. In an otherwise very big and pretty messy film. I did notice too that when the like when the I don't know how to describe it when the souls have been taken and when like the monsters are walking around in the skin suits, couldn't help but notice that Velma's outfit gets a lot more revealing. Yeah. Did you notice that? I did, yeah. We get a very low-cut V-neck and the skirt, again, gets a little bit higher and just generally a bit of a sexier Velma. We know in the context of what the original plot was that they started filming. Yes. It makes a bit more sense. It does make a little bit so more no, sense. I think James Gunn said that there could easily have been an 18-rated cut of that movie. Whoa. Or there's, there's an 18-rated script of the movie. I think it got changed a bit before they started filming, but... It was mid-production that it came down to yeah. being a kids' movie. I would watch a, a, like a dark version of, of Mystery Inc. I read a book that was called The Meddling Kids, I think, and it was it was basically Scooby-Doo, but they changed the names of the characters. But it's like the, the Fred character ends up killing himself, and then that brings the others back to try and solve like, yeah. what went wrong, and it goes back to a mystery that they were involved in when they were kids. And it was it, Obviously, they don't think it was dark, but I mean, I would watch something along those lines if it was done properly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is ultimately still a very family friendly film. Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's if you're fan, like fans of the original series, there's a lot to enjoy. It's is. just it's such an easy watch if you can it ignore is. like the scrappy elements and some well, bits that just don't really work. The other thing is, is like you know, t- as time goes by, this film is twenty years old. You watch it, and it literally is going back in time. I mean, yeah. the the soundtrack the the fashion of the islanders you know like the hairstyles that they have it's like everything even just down to the way it's shot it's it's literally traveling back in time like movies are probably the closest thing to a time machine that we will yeah. ever have a time capsule it is a time capsule and you know you get a lot of enjoyment out of it yeah i am looking forward to rewatching monsters unleashed i know i don't like it as much i actually liked monsters but unleashed. i know that obviously they do what cyber chase did but better by bringing back the old monsters playing on the i think they had, i think they pulled out some better monsters than Cyber Chase did. It still baffles me how well regarded, Cyber highly Chase. regarded Cyber Chase actually is. I know, it baffles me. We, a we watched well. a ranking recently of the best movies and like Cyber se- Chase was second. I'm like, that is so incorrect. <laughs> yeah. Zombie Island was first, obviously. Zombie Island was that is just It's just the best. Yeah. But it's gave us a list of other ones that we want to watch. Yeah. But... Have you, is, have you, are no, you I think I think that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah. I I really enjoyed rewatching it. It got me quite emotional yeah. rewatching it because this was if you kind of like our age, you know, mid to late twenties, then that you will know this film. You will be familiar with. I was, this like, film. I was nine years old when this came out. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching this so often. I, I, I saw this in the cinema. I remember seeing this in the cinema. I don't think I saw it in the cinema, but I watched the hell out of it on VHS and yeah. the sequel. So. If you haven't watched this film in a long time, track it down. I, get, I think we watched it on Prime. It pops up on Netflix all... That's, I've probably watched it a lot because it could, it's, if it's, it's on Netflix, I'll just put it on in the background. It's an easy film to get hold of. Yeah. I, th- I, I think I, so. I highly anyway. recommend giving it a rewatch on its 20th birthday. Exactly. 20 years. Exactly, yeah. So I know Matthew Little recently did an Airbnb advert as Shaggy as with Shaggy. a mystery machine. Yeah. And that, that, was, re- that was quite cool. Brilliant. Because I've seen him in interviews do the vo- put the voice on every now and then. Yeah. It's like... You can just dip in and out of I it. Love, I love Matthew so, Bird. Yeah. Thank you for stopping by, guys. This is not the end of our Scooby-Doo adventure. No, hell no. But I'm glad I'm glad 
doing these videos gives, just gives me an excuse to watch Scooby Doo. Yeah, there's so many more we have to get through. You know what's next though? Zombie Island. I'm gonna too. I'm gonna fight for Monsters Unleashed with everything I have. <laughs> we'll watch it at some but point. We'll see. We'll just see like at some victim. point you'll get to watch Halloween H2O. Yeah, at some point. <laughs> right. Thanks a lot, guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye.